challenge. Yeah. Whatever you were dealing with while you were single, you brought that into the marriage and it's not working. Yep. Because um, when it comes to, I say with learning who you are and different stuff like that, like how can you tell someone to love you if you don't even love yourself in that sense as well, right. knowing who you are. Say, so do you love the person that you become or mm -hmm. you're not satisfied at all with yourself and with your identity with Christ and just your physical identity in general? Because mm -hmm. many people, they feel like if I get married, I'll, I'll be okay. And that's not okay. Because <laughs> I was like, when you get married, that's when the everything is on a doggone table mm -hmm. and you have nothing to defend yourself with. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have to ask yourself, say, um, I remember Pastor Boo, he told us what, I think it was a youth meeting. He said, write down everything that you have a problem with, that you are challenged with, or you don't like about yourself. Mm -hmm. And say, and look at that list and say, okay, are these something, are these things that you can change? Some stuff physically you can't change. If you just have a bit nose, I'm sorry, you just still have a bit nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, or is it something like I'm dealing with, um, overeating or different stuff like that i'm dealing with pornography or different stuff what can you do to change that different stuff mm -hmm. and then is that a challenge or a problem for you then go to god to help you correct those one at a time he's like mm -hmm. you can't tackle it all at once he's like you're gonna have to learn and say god i'm giving this to you help me to redirect myself to get back on the right path and try to figure out where did i step off of mm -hmm. so if you don't handle those stuff when you are single or different stuff you're gonna bring that straight to mm -hmm. your data and different stuff because when y'all have an intimate conversation they're gonna be like so why do you shut down right after you get into an argument with me why why do you go to yourself mm -hmm. And you're going to be asking yourself and have to go back and be like, okay, so why did I used to do this? And this could be when you was in childhood. Yeah, and, and you will say, well, that's just me. Mm -hmm. That's just my <laughs> that's identity. The, that's just my identity. That's no, how it's I not. handle things. <laughs> but it, it still goes back to where we have heard so many times. It's the battlefield of the mind. Yep. So to go back to what the subject is, is talking about, identifying mm -hmm. um, your identity. So that, that lets you know that you got to settle your identity here, here. Mm -hmm. you already um have it in your spirit it's in there yeah but you're gonna have to pull out of your spirit and pull it up here so your identity um we were talking about identity the other day too mm -hmm. about what we heard on the radio what your identity is in your mind your body is going to try to line up with it yep Yep. Or you gonna you gonna cut, pull, drag, or act or behave what you think your identity is. Mm -hmm. So that goes back to the important part of you have to get Christ on the inside of you with your from your spirit and get it in your mind. The Bible talks about renewing of, of the, the mind, mind mm -hmm. to get who your true identity is is mm -hmm. and that's why it's important find out who your identity is in christ and then you can um show um show somebody else who your identity is and you know where you are supposed to be and and people you have to understand when you are doing what it is that god has called you to the purpose to you have such a purpose i mean a, a peace mm -hmm. on the inside as the Bible talks about a peace that passes all understanding. Yep. It, and and it's like you like you just uh, mm -hmm. when you are where you're supposed to be in yes. your identity. And I'm not saying that and we neither one of us are not saying that you gonna know this or learn this. This ain't overnight. like a six month process. Like this yeah. may take some years. Yeah. <laughs> It, it took you some years, years to get where you was. Yeah. Now you know to go back the other way. And it may take you some time to get that. You know, um, it's different timing for different people. It yeah. might not take you but six months. Mm -hmm. Somebody else, it might take them 10 years. You just mm -hmm. don't know. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. But you still have to go in that direction in, in order to... Um, at least feel some type of peace and comfort knowing what your true identity is 
and it make more peace and harmony in your life and in your family. Mm -hmm. Yep. Another reason why you need to know who your identity is is because um, sometimes people use their marriage or their dating. That's their identity. That's, Ooh, that's, that's not yes. your identity. That's, that's a good talk. Go ahead. I got a point right after this. That's not your identity. Mm -hmm. It's not your spouse. And right. some people do. So when their spouse, or for some reason it didn't work out or a challenge or something like that, you lost because you you connected all your identity into the spouse and we were talking about this yesterday i was i thought about it later on i was thinking how i believe when people like get divorced or get separated after their children are gone and different stuff like that sometimes it's not all cases but sometimes i think that that wife or that husband when they got married they put, they didn't truly fully knew their identity. So they put their identity into the roles of being the parent, being that mom and being that dad, that was their purpose. So after the children grown and they get out their house and they moving on with their lives, now it's just y'all two. And then y'all don't know y'all purpose mm -hmm. individually and together. So then y'all just fall off and y'all have friction with one another cause y'all like, we don't know what else to do. And that's not every situation, but still, I, you can say if I agree or disagree with that statement. I, I agree with that, but I, I had this other thought that I'm trying to remember before I forget. Mm -hmm. I, I could see this too. Sometime, uh, especially with our culture. Culture. Background <laughs> culture. Um, identity of being the mom. Mm-hmm. Sometimes the children move out, and now now she thinks she her husband's mama. That ain't gonna work. That's that ain't not gonna that's work. not your identity. <laughs> that's not your identity. That's gonna be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes it could be vice versa, mm -hmm. you know. And um, sometimes people um, they gravitate towards each other. Like if um, someone need to identify their identity, and this person come along. And they start telling them, this is who you are. This is what you need to do. Mm -hmm. And and then you get into the marriage and they going through all that. And and um, you need to do this with your, with the, the children. And, and, and one of the spouses is being a, a parent to them because that person does not know who their identity and their purpose is. Mm -hmm. And that's what they chose to be their identity. Say, well, this just has to be it yeah, right now. Well, my spouse told me, such and such and such. So I'm going to go do that because you don't know who you yeah. are in Christ. Now, I'm not talking about you going there and you start talking about, you don't be telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm my own person. I got my own identity. When you know who you are in Christ, it's going to be a harmony mm -hmm. there. And that comes when y'all was in courtship and when y'all was engaged. I feel like it's important when you become, well, you could talk about this while y'all dating, but important, especially when y'all engage, I feel like every couple should have a conversation and be like, this is what I feel like my purpose is from God. This is what mm -hmm. he called me to do. Very this important. is his, and then this, um, what we just going to say husband. My, and my husband will say, this is what I, my purpose is. Okay. Well, God wants us together. We see that. Mm -hmm. We both have that in our spirits. So what's our purpose together? Because there's a reason why God wants two people to come together, not just to multiply. There's for something else too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but people feel like that's what it is. That's their purpose in marriage, just to multiply. I was like, mm -hmm. if that was the case, God wouldn't make a man to be like, okay, you only have one wife and one man. It, anybody can go multiply. But mm -hmm. why is it that y'all have to stay in covenant together? And many people mm -hmm. don't understand that it's more to the covenant than just multiplying. What else is behind? There's something, there's a reason why God want both of y'all purposes to be together because y'all can build with one another. But if y'all both don't even know y'all identity in the first place, mm -hmm. y'all don't have nothing to build. Y'all just looking at a lot that had the potential of being something, but y'all don't know what it's going to be yet. Right. Mm -hmm. That's true. And that, um, when, once again, when both of you identify who you are and you know that this is the person that God has for you, it's going to blend and flow in. Like they say, the two become as one. 
you can't tell where the one begin and where the other one begin. I mean, I, what I'm trying to say. Repeat it. <laughs> You can't tell where either one of them started mm -hmm. and where either one of them end because yeah. they keep flowing together. And, mm -hmm. you know, your dad and me have done that before to where you can just, when it comes to a spiritual side of it, we just flow together and, and it's just. And I feel flow. like that's what it comes to. Hmm. I never thought of it like this, but I feel like that's what it comes to. Um, this is a sensitive topic, but I'm going to talk about it about people talking about being that independent woman, different stuff, I'm my own woman. And sometimes men say that too, I'm my own man and different stuff I do what I want to do. But I feel like people say that in the case of when they seen people that have that um, significant other, um, they had what they was going to do and different stuff like that. And that woman or that man didn't really know what they want to do. And they just went along with it or said, well, you just need to come and do what I'm going to do. And not having like their own individual purpose of what they want to do. So it was like, well, I just want to do what I want to do. And they'd be like, well, no, well, you don't really know what you're going to do. So I just think you just need to do what I do type of stuff. Well, you ain't going to find out what you need to do if, if I be doing everything that, that you do. You do. That, that ain't going to work. <laughs> so I feel like that's when it's just like you have to take your time and he had to take his time. So y'all both have a mutual agreement of what y'all have to do mm -hmm. together. So... Where would we start at if a person would ask you, where do you think I should start at as far as finding out who my identity is? Um, today. <laughs> today. <laughs> um, but I feel like everybody's different because I can, I can remember where um, I kind of found, I still can't say fully that I fully truly know my identity in Christ, but I feel like I started when I was younger, especially with y'all reading scriptures with me, but not everybody come from a Christian household or grew up in a church like that. But I can say when I was at least 12, I remember when I did my first um, women's conference with Miss Christina and different stuff. I found an interest and found a gift that I was like, well, I like ministering to people, actually helping people to see a breakthrough in their lives to get better. But I, and then that's when I had a hunger to know scriptures. I have journals still to this day of me listening to Terry Savelle, all the word and trying to grasp all that I can. So I feel like first you need to start off with prayer. And it don't have to be no long and deep prayer, but go to God and be like, God, I want to know who I am in you. And Mama Miller, she always taught me that. She was like, you need to find out who you are before you go to tell somebody else to love who you are. I was like, that girl, Mama Miller. Say that again. She said, you need to find out who you are before you tell someone else to love who you are. Because you can't say, I'm going to tell you love me. I don't know who I am. <laughs> but I, don't, I want you to love me though. Mm -hmm. that, that ain't, that, that's not going to work. So I feel like you need to go in prayer and ask God and be like, God, teach me who, who am I? Because I'm nothing without you. So what is the something? Because I'm with you now. <laughs> so find it out and say, God, just show me. And God will take the time to show you. He, he'll mm -hmm. call you out. Be like, mm -hmm. you see that over there? That, that's you. That's ugly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the ugly side of that's that. That's not I mean, your identity. That's not your identity, but you're doing it. And once you start doing prayer, go in scriptures, you, like, we got Google now. You can Google something and be like, what scripture does it talk about peace or something? You can find different scriptures. It talks about your identity in Christ in Old Testament and New Testament. Look up scriptures. You don't have to go into a deep, holy hour scripture reading to try to find out who you are. You can do a scripture a day and be like, this is what God says I am. Get index cards and put it around your room or anything. Say, this is who I am. Now, one thing about this, mm -hmm. that your perspective, what you're coming from, mm -hmm. you can't assume that everybody this looking at us <laughs> is born again. True. Well, first, you need to get saved. <laughs> you, need you need to, to give your life you need to, give to your Christ. Life to Christ. <laughs> you gonna the first one is to find out where you at now. To say, okay, what am I right now? I, I don't even know who I am or different stuff. Once you recognize that, 
you need to recognize what's in your heart and be like, well, is it God even in me to so I can even tap in or pull out what's in my spirit so it can renew my mind? And if you are unsure of that, I say just go ahead and save just to make sure. <laughs> and so I say salvation is first. Salvation is first. So salvation. Mm -hmm. Asking God to come into your heart. Mm -hmm. And I've, I heard it been um, very simple of ask God to come into your life and do something with me. Mm -hmm. And God would do just that. Yep. You don't have to know a whole lot of scriptures or even know where it's at in the Bible. Just start and say, God, come in into my heart and do something with it. And I denounce what I think I know. And show me what it is that I need to do. And fill me with your precious Holy Ghost. And start from there. Mm -hmm. Start that relationship from there. And then ask God to show you. To John 3, 16. And how much he loves you. God loves you so much. Whether you love him or know him. He loves you so much. You just don't know. As someone say that you you the best thing. That ever happened since sliced bread. Since they bring it pre-sliced. <laughs> God will be that much into you, but you have to ask him to come in. Mm -hmm. So that's the first step. That's first step. finding out who you are in Christ. Second step. Well, my second step, that pretty much go with the first yeah. step. Yeah. <laughs> you ask God asking, who you you're are. You're asking God who you are, and he'll tell you. And, and don't say that you don't have the ability to hear him. You just heard him. You hear him right now. You hear him. He's, he's telling you what it is that you need to do. And you're allowing him to come in. He's just waiting for you to allow him to come in. Give you God have permission. the ability. You may not have it develop as well as someone else. But you can hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, just a vest. Well, the second one. Get into the word. And taking time. Yeah. Just like you um, take the time and to ask questions or... You know, you have a, you just found out the best friend girl or something like that. Or you just met somebody and say, oh, girl, so, you know, what do you do? Mm -hmm. Oh, you do that. So what's your favorite color? Girl, that's your favorite color. <laughs> oh, girl, yeah. That's how you find out different things about a person that you just met. Okay, ask God. Mm -hmm. Well, God, what would you do in this situation? Mm -hmm. uh, well, God, well, what you think about that? Just talk to him. Yeah. You know, sometimes, um, as you they real. say, re religious um, things or people try to make you think that God is so far away. Just start talking to him. He'll yeah. answer you. And that's how you find out who God is. And God, he'll tell you to go to the Bible because we need to read his word to help us to understand and refer things back to his word. And, and we're not saying that we got it all together. By all means, we don't. No. <laughs> we always have another level to go in God. There's never the top level in God. Everybody can improve in something mm -hmm. somewhere. But just getting to know God and reading in his word and you's like, oh, I didn't, I never knew that was in there. You know, I've read all that before and I never saw that before. And you know, that's, I have, I can identify with this person. That's how you get to know God yep. and identify who you are and say, oh, the woman with the with issue of blood, that's me. Because I can see her do this and do that. That's me. And then you start learning who you really are. Yep. And what you need to cut. And um, what did, um, what's that? Um, what did we do at that lunch week? Um, we did a lot of stuff. Oh, we did. <laughs> it was like chop, chop. I remember the chop, chop, but. I remember my part. Boo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, boo -doo -doo -doo. Like, chop chop. Oh, chop chop, stomp stomp. That's what it was. Chop chop, stomp stomp. stomp. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Well, I bet you, I bet you, some of the women is from the retreat. If they watching this video, oh, they gonna put, put they it gonna, down in the comment gonna, section. What y'all yeah, remember? They gonna, <laughs> they gonna address us. <laughs> y'all don't even remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that, that has been, yeah, so two, yeah, at least two years ago and everything, but yeah, we had a good time. That was fun. Yeah. All righty. 
we have made the first long video oh, to get my, to a whole hour. A it's whole 50, hour. It's 50 minutes. I didn't think we were going to talk this long. Yeah. But it, it but it's that okay. just shows you when we at home and we're talking a lot of times, we, we hit a lot of different subjects. I'm telling you, if this camera was not recording, we would have been into a whole nother conversation. Just yeah, split. we we try to stick with the topic. Yeah. Because we can go in so many different areas. And then we try to figure out what was the first topic that we was talking about. Yeah. But if you like the video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Show the thumb. Work the thumb. That's the thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you do the thumbs up button you comment tell me what you think you can go to my instagram it is i am ashlyn underscore i shouldn't know mm -hmm. that by heart yeah. <laughs> underscore underscore and go and subscribe and tell them that bell notification more videos gonna be coming on the way thank you my beautiful and mommy. i won't be the only person so yeah you will see plenty of the people you probably see my dad my brother and some other people on here that were light that had the same type of mindset that I have of spiritual things and don't mind talking about it to us beautiful crowd to y'all beautiful crowd. But you got anything else you want to say to the people to the two of you? To the two of you, we say that that that's what the old folks. Will that's call. how that's how old folks call it. That's what we. That's you our play. On that two two of you. <laughs> <laughs> so anything to the two of you. No, I enjoyed um, being on here. Honored to be on here. Um, I've never done anything like this before, so this is new for me. I, I wanted to be nervous, but um, it's all right. You were nervous. Just, I say I wanted oh. to be nervous, but it's just having a conversation. Like you say, having a talk with Ashley now. And I look forward to you asking me again. And, and I'm very honored. This is your first and last I'm, time. See, I'm going to tell y'all love you. <laughs> Alrighty, y'all. We talk to y'all later. Bye. You ain't going to wait.